Hello and welcome to Algebra 1 Lesson 14. In this video we're going to learn about plotting ordered pairs. Alright, so in the last lesson we learned that a linear equation in two variables has an infinite number of solutions. Now we display a solution as an ordered pair. So you have an x value, comma, a y value. And it's always in that order. The x value is on the left, the y value is on the right. So for example, in this equation, we have 3x minus 3y equals 18. And we have two ordered pairs here that are proposed solutions. So if this ordered pair, 1 comma negative 5, is a solution to this equation, that means that I can take this value here and plug it in for x, this value here and plug it in for y, and I should get a true statement, right? The left and the right side should be equal. So let's see if it is. So I would take a 1 and plug it in for x, so 3 times 1 minus, I'd take a negative 5 and plug it in for y, so I'd have 3 times negative 5, and this should be equal to 18. 3 times 1 is 3, negative 3 times negative 5 is positive 15, so plus 15, this should equal 18, and it does, 18 equals 18, so that works out. So we can say that this ordered pair, 1 comma negative 5 is a solution for this equation. Again, because when I plug in a 1 for x and a negative 5 for y, I get a true statement. Let's do the same thing with this ordered pair 2 comma negative 4. All right, so we'd have 3 times x, our value for x is 2, minus 3 times y, our value for y is negative 4, and this equals 18. So 3 times 2 is 6. Then we have negative 3 times negative 4, that's 12, so plus 12 equals 18, and it does. 6 plus 12 is 18, so you get 18 equals 18. And so we could say that this ordered pair, 2 comma negative 4, is also a solution for this equation, 3x minus 3y equals 18. So you might be asking yourself, what are we going to do with these ordered pairs? Well, in the next section we're going to learn how to graph a linear equation in two variables. But in order to do that, we first have to be able to plot an ordered pair. All right, so in order to talk about plotting ordered pairs, we're going to first begin by talking about something known as the Cartesian coordinate system. The, again, Cartesian coordinate system. Now, this might be a source of some confusion for you because this has many names. And probably in your textbook it'll be called Cartesian coordinate system and then after that they start calling it the rectangular coordinate system and sometimes they just call it the coordinate plane and a lot of students will be like well what, what is this now what is this they're all the same thing okay it's named after its inventor and you'll probably read the story as a side note in your textbook where it says you know he's lying in bed and he's watching a fly move and he comes up with this this coordinate plane and so, long story short, it's named after him, and it's called the Cartesian Coordinate System, but you might hear it called something else. Most of the time, I'm just going to call it a coordinate plane. It's nice and simple. What you need to know is that it consists of two number lines. One's horizontal, and one's vertical. So let's take a look at this thing. All right, so here's an example of the coordinate plane. Now, if you just look at this right here, starting here and going to the right, this is the number line we've been working with for a long time now. It's a horizontal number line, and you'll notice that if I were to tell you this is the point zero, everything to the right of zero is a positive number. We know that already. Everything to the left of zero is a negative number. We know that already. But new to us is this vertical number line, okay, this vertical number line. And the way this works is that everything above zero is positive, Everything below zero is negative. So a couple of important points here. The first thing that you need to know is that the horizontal axis, this axis that's going left to right, this is the x-axis. This is the x-axis. And actually, let me write this, let me write this right here, x-axis. Okay, so it's going left to right. Now, the y-axis is going up and down. So let me kind of write this like this. This is the y-axis. Now, the place where they intersect, you'll see it right here, right? This comes down and meets this right here. See where I have the zero there? That's called the origin. That's the place of intersection. So this is the origin 
All right, so the last little piece of information I'm gonna give you about this, the coordinate plane has what we call quadrants. So you can kind of box this off into four areas. So this is an area, this is an area, this is an area, and this is an area. So this first area all the way to the right, the top right, this is quadrant number one. And let me erase this so I can show you something. Let me erase all these. In quadrant one, the X values are positive. So you see that we exist in a plane of space where all the X values are to the right of zero and all the Y values are above zero. So in quadrant one, your ordered pair is gonna have an X value that's positive and a Y value that's positive. So your X is positive, your Y is positive. Now that's important for you to remember because that might come up on a test. Now we move counterclockwise. So we go kind of this direction. So the next quadrant is over here. This is quadrant two. And in this quadrant, you'll notice that my X values are to the left of zero. So they're gonna be negative my Y values are still above zero, so they're gonna be positive. So this is my X, this is my Y. So X is negative here, Y is positive. All right, now we continue going this way. Now this is quadrant three. Now in this quadrant, we're to the left of zero, so our X values are negative, and we're below zero, so our Y values are also negative. So again, this is my X values, these are my Y values. All right, then the final quadrant, we go this way. Again, it's counterclockwise, so it just goes this way. We end up here, and this is quadrant four. And in quadrant four, the X values are to the right of zero, so they're positive. The Y values are below zero, so they're negative. So this is the X values, these are the Y values. So Something you might want to write down, you might have a test and your teacher might say, what are the X values in quadrant four? What are the Y values in quadrant four? Are they positive or negative? Or she might give you an ordered pair and say, what quadrant does it lie in? And if you've memorized the signs for each quadrant, you'll be able to tell right away. For example, if I gave you an ordered pair and that ordered pair was, let's say, six comma negative three, well, I know my X value has to be positive, so that can only be in quadrant one or four, and the Y value has to be negative. That can only occur in four or three. Now, what fits both? Well, the X value is positive, the Y value is negative, so that's quadrant four. X value is positive, Y value is negative, so this would be in quadrant four. Let's say I gave you negative two comma negative three said, what quadrant is that in? Well, if we look here, this is negative and this is negative. So that occurs in the third quadrant, right? Negative and negative. So then this is in the third quadrant. So not very difficult, just some basic memorization going on there and something you might be tested on. So you might want to take note of that. All right. So now let's talk about the main thing here. How exactly do we plot an ordered pair? Well, we simply find the meeting of the X location and Y location. And I'm gonna show you this through some examples. It's very, very easy. Once you do it a few times, you pretty much have the hang of it right away. So we wanna plot each ordered pair and determine which quadrant it lies in. And I'm gonna start out with three comma two. So we'll come down to our coordinate plane. Let me just write our ordered pair off to the side, three comma two. And I just wanna call your attention to a couple of things. I want you to recall that this is the origin. Okay, this is the origin. The horizontal axis, the one that's going sideways, is the x-axis. This is your x-axis. Your vertical axis is the y-axis. So I label this one as x, this one as y. Now with your ordered pair, remember the left value is the x value, the right value is the y value. So what I can do is I can start at the origin. If I have an X value of three, that tells me to go three units to the right. So one, two, three units to the right. This is three. 
And then a y value of two means I'm going up two units. So I'm going up one and then two. So this would be the location three comma two, right? That's where that ordered pair would lie on the coordinate plane. Now you could have done that a different way. And I'll just fill in that space. Kind of take your pencil or your pen and just kind of, you know, fill in a circle, just like if you're filling in the answer on a Scantron, right? That's the same thing. Just make a filled in circle, filled in dot. And that's a little too big. Let me make it a little bit smaller. Something like that. Now, also what I could have done is started at a Y value of two. So going up one, two, and then went over to the right three. So go over one, two, three. And again, I end up at the same spot. So whichever one you do first, you end up at the same spot. This is three comma two. And then it asks, which quadrant does it lie in? Well, you remember the quadrants go like this. This is the first quadrant and it goes counterclockwise. So it goes this way. So this is the second, this is the third, and then this is the fourth. So this lies in the first quadrant. So this is quadrant number one. All right, so our next order pair is six comma five. So now we're looking at six comma five. Again, this is your X value. This is your Y value. So I can start out at the origin and go six units to the right. This is six on the X axis and I want five on the Y axis. So I would just go five units up. So one, two, three, four, five. So that's right there. Let me use a different color here. So that would be six comma five. And again, if you wanted to, you could start off at your Y location. So I could start off by starting at the origin, say I'm going up to five on the Y axis. So one, two, three, four, five. So that's right here. And then I could go over to the right six units. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And I'm just counting for the sake of completeness. You can visually see where the intersection of five on the Y axis and six on the X axis is. You can kind of pinpoint that. But again, when you first start, you want to be completely sure. So you might want to say, okay, well, this is where six is on the X axis. This is where five is on the Y axis. The intersection of the two, you know, you can kind of draw a little dotted line and that wasn't straight. Right, and that's where they intersect. So this would be the point six comma five. And then what quadrant is it in? Well, again, this is the first quadrant. Everything is positive. And it goes this way. This is the second quadrant, the third quadrant, and the fourth quadrant. All right, the next one is negative eight comma negative one. So again, this is your X location. This is your Y location. And so I can start at the origin and I can go to the left eight units to find negative eight, or I can kind of make it quicker and just say, okay, the X location is negative eight. I can just start there and my Y location is negative one. So I would basically just go down one. And I would go down one. That's what I'm looking for. Here is negative one on the Y axis. So you're looking again for where they meet. So you can kind of draw a line for each. This is the meeting point. This is negative eight comma negative one. Let me do that in different color. Negative eight comma negative one. And what quadrant does it lie in? Well, again, this is the first, move this way, this is the second, so then this would be the third, right? It lies in the third quadrant. And then for the sake of completeness, this is the fourth quadrant. All right, what about one comma five? Again, my X location, my Y location. So an X location of one and a Y location of five. So let's kind of reverse it. Let's start out with the Y location of five. So I'd find that here and an X location of one is here. So if I'm already up five, I just need to go to the right one. Again, you can kind of draw a little line to see where they would intersect and it's right there. All right, so this is one comma five and this lies in the first quadrant, right? One, two, three, four. All right, what about negative two comma negative seven? What about negative two comma negative seven? So this is the X value, this is the Y value. So an X value of negative two, if we're on the X axis, here's negative two. A Y value of negative seven is here. So essentially I'm going left two and down seven, right? Or I'm going down seven and left two. It doesn't matter which order you kind of do this, or you could start at negative two and just go down seven. 
Again, a lot of different ways to do it. So if I want to, to make it completely clear, let me just draw a line there, draw a line here, and that's my point. Right? This is negative two comma negative seven. And which quadrant does a lie in? Again, this is the first one, this is the second one, this is the third one, so this is lying in the third quadrant, and this is the fourth one, right? It's counterclockwise. Just remember that it starts positive, positive, so it starts here, and it goes this way. One, two, three, four. All right, so the next one is negative 10, comma, five. All right, so negative 10, comma, five. This is an X value, this is a Y value. All right, so I'm gonna find negative 10 on the x-axis, that's all the way over here. I'm gonna find five on the y-axis, that's right here. And I'm just looking for their point of intersection, so I can go to the left 10 and up five, or I can go up five and to the left 10, again, it doesn't matter. All right, I could start out at five on the y-axis and go over 10, or I could start out at negative 10 and go up five. However you do it, you're gonna arrive at the same location, which is negative 10, comma five. And again, if I wanna just kind of draw a line like that, and then another one like that, to make it clear where they intersect. And then what quadrant is this in? Well, this is the first quadrant, and it goes counterclockwise. So this is number two, this is number three, and again, this is number four. So it's in the second quadrant. All right, so now we have four comma negative three. So four comma negative three. Again, this is the X value, this is the Y value. So let's start out at negative three on the y-axis. So let's start out here. And let's move four units to the right on the x-axis. So one, two, three, four. So that's right here. And so this is gonna be our point, four comma negative three. Again, if I wanna draw kind of some lines to show the intersection, again, this is four comma negative three. And then what quadrant does it lie in? Again, this is number one, it goes counterclockwise. This is two, three, and then four, so it lies in the fourth quadrant. All right, for the next one, we have negative nine comma negative one. So negative nine comma negative one. And this is your X value, this is your Y value. So where is negative nine at? So negative nine on the X axis is over here, and negative one on the Y axis is here. So I can go to the left nine and down one. I could go down one to the left nine, I could start out at negative nine and go down one. I could start out at negative one and go over to the left nine. Again, it doesn't matter. Any way you kind of think about this, any way you kind of understand it, you can do it because you're always gonna end up in the same location. So this is the intersection of those two. Let me just draw that right there. And it kind of messes up my negative nine. So let me put this one little thing there. And I'm just gonna notate that this is negative nine comma negative one. And then what quadrant does it lie in? Again, this is one, this is positive, positive, and we go this way. So this is two, and then this is three. So it lies in the third quadrant, and then this is four. So two, three, and then four. 